Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture from Unit 8. We are going to start using the trigonometric ratios that you learned about in 8.1 today. Let's get started. Firstly, I want you to look at these three triangles as a great illustration of why the ratios are powerful and why we care. If you look closely at all three triangles, you should recognize that these are all three 30, 60, 90 triangles. We've learned about these specific triangles before, but we know that they're all similar, and even if they weren't triangles that we knew otherwise about, we know based on the angle-angle theorem that these three triangles are similar. Because they are similar, we're able to find out some of the missing side lengths for the two triangles on the right. The one on the left, all of the side lengths are given to us, one, two, square root of three, and we know that that's the relationship if we fill in the full um, equilateral triangle around this. We know that this is half of the full side and we can do the Pythagorean theorem to solve for this side. We've used this shortcut many times and we can go ahead and apply that here. We can apply the special right triangle theorem or a formula rather. We know that this side is half and will be 8. We can solve the Pythagorean theorem to find that this is 8 square root of 3. We can continue to do the same thing here. But here's why the ratios matter and here's why they're important. In this first triangle on the left, if I look at the 30 degree angle and I try to write the sine ratio of that 30 degrees, remember that sine, so katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to go to the opposite side is 1 over the hypotenuse is 2. When I look at this triangle over here on the right, we've already talked about how we know that this side is 8. When I write the ratio for this 30 degrees, I get 8 over 16, opposite over hypotenuse. When I look at the triangle on the bottom, I'm going to use opposite over hypotenuse, which again, we know that this is half. The sine of 30 degrees in this triangle is 7 over 14. In any 30 degree triangle, that ratio is going to be equal to 0.5. The shorter leg over the hypotenuse. The shorter leg over the hypotenuse because it's always doubling. So if I give you any 30 degree triangle with any hypotenuse, you know you can find this leg, but we also can relate that to the sine ratio. This isn't just true with 30 degrees. This is true with any triangle measurement, with any degree. Those ratios stay consistent whether or not we make the triangles bigger or smaller because of the power of the similarity between the triangles. The dilation dilates both leg and hypotenuse the same. This is so powerful that we've organized all of these ratios in a table. This is just a snippet of the table right here with just the angles 0 through 15 so that you can actually see the numbers well in this video. But when I look at this triangle right here, and I write down what is the sine of 13 degrees, I go opposite over hypotenuse. Well, 9 over 40 reduced, oops, it's not even approximate, 9 over 40 reduced is 0 0.225. Here's what happens if I plug sine of 13 into a calculator and I make sure that that calculator is in um, degree mode. I get 0.22495, which, what is that round to? 0.225. On the table, I've got the sine of 13 degrees, 0 0.2250. This is the same regardless of how we're approaching it. Since this is always the same, if I have another 13 degree right triangle with other sides, that ratio between them is still going to be 0.225 every single time. And I can find that in this table right here. What if you have a triangle with a five degree angle? There's the sine ratio right here for that five degree angle. I don't know what the sides are, but that's the ratio between them, no matter how big that five degree right triangle is. Before we start using these ratios a little bit more, I want you to get comfortable using them inside of equations and doing some algebra with them. 
On the left, I have some examples, and on the right, I have some problems that I'm gonna ask you to do. On the left, first of all, is just x equals the sine of 41 degrees. In order to convert the sine of 41 degrees into a number, I need my trig table or a calculator that has the trig functions on it. Desmos is an online calculator that has these trig functions. Just make sure that it's in degree mode and not radians underneath the little tool. Here is a link to your own trig table that you can print and keep at home or just use online. I'm going to use this snippet and I'm going to look right here in the sine column because this is a sine function and 41 degrees where those meet is 0.6561. This equation needs no manipulation except to put 0.6561 into my answer. Technically this is approximate. Everything in the table is rounded so we could use the approximately equals to instead of an equal sign. You try problem number one right now using the link that I gave you or an online calculator. Okay, example number two down here. Now, I don't need to look anything up in the table. I'm just given 0.5446, which looks like it's something that came off of the table, but then that's equal to a fraction of 32 over x. I need to figure out how to deal with that. This literally means divide by x, and if I need to get rid of a fraction, I don't want fractions in my answer, I'm gonna have to undo that division. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by x. This doesn't solve my equation in one step, but it gets me closer, because it gets rid of the fraction on one side. Now all that's left to do is to go ahead and divide by 0.5446 on each side so that I can get rid of that number, and I'm left with simply x. Using a calculator to help you carry out that division, you get 58.76. Be careful to round up correctly if you're going to round to two decimals. And again, this is approximate. You try problem number two now. Okay, now for example number three. In this case, again, I don't need any manipulation with this example. I already have x isolated on the left-hand side, but I'm going to have to use a trig table again. I'm going to wait until I get to the very end of any equation to do this, but now that everything is already isolated, I'm going to now substitute sine of 87 degrees for the value from the trig table that I need. I've looked that up on my own table, and I got 0.9986 for that value. I've substituted the sine of 87 degrees for that four-digit decimal. Now I can just go ahead and finish using my calculator and I get that x is approximately equal to 13.98. You go ahead and do problem number three. Okay, now the equations are gonna get slightly more complicated. I've got two more examples I'm gonna do for you on the left, and I've got three problems that you're gonna try on the right. On the left, the first example, again, I don't wanna substitute this until I'm at the end of my equation. I'm gonna do some algebraic manipulation before I ever do that. I have x times some value, the tangent of 81 degrees. I know that this is some number that I will later substitute, and right now I'm just gonna go ahead and divide by that entire number, whatever it may be. So I write the entire tangent of 81 degrees in my equation. This goes ahead and cancels and leaves me with just x on the right-hand side on the left, I am left with 13.5 divided by the tangent of 81 degrees. I'm now ready to substitute. 13.5 divided by 6.3138. At this point, go ahead and use your calculator. I'm a little bit out of space, so I'm going to write it over here. X becomes approximately 2.138, and that is my final answer. In the second equation below, same thing. I'm not going to substitute the sine of 63 until I get to the end of my equation and x is completely isolated. But first, I do see that I have this division that I need to deal with. Again, how do we undo division? We multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 24. 24 times the sine of 63 degrees equals my isolated x. And I'm now ready to go ahead and substitute. I get 24 times 0.8910 from the table, 
and now I'm ready for my calculator. And I get 21.384 equals x. Can you please solve the three equations on the right, one at a time? Now we're gonna see why I just did all of those equations. Now we're gonna actually apply those equations and put them to use. Here's a triangle with some missing information. I'm given two angles. I'm given the right angle and I'm given 13 degrees. I'm given one side length. We know that this triangle lives in a family of 13 degree right triangles where it is similar to all other 13 degree right triangles where there is some known and defined ratio between these two sides that will always be consistent and that ratio is defined on this table right here. We have the sine, the cosine, or the tangent ratio. I need to decide the ratio that's going to be most helpful in this particular situation with this particular triangle. And I do that by thinking about my opposite adjacent and hypotenuse labels. The information that I'm given right here is the opposite side from that 13 degree angle. And the side that I want to find is my hypotenuse. So I'm going to think through that SOHCAHTOA mnemonic and I want to identify which of these uses opposite and hypotenuse. It's right here. It's the sign. So let's use the sine to write an equation. I know that the sine of this 13 degree angle is the opposite side over that hypotenuse, which is unknown. Now we're ready to use our new skills for solving equations with trig ratios in them. We just practiced that, let's put it to work. I see that this has a division on the right hand side that I need to get rid of. So my first step is to multiply by that x value. I'm leaving the sine of 13 intact and unrounded until I get to the end. Now I have x times that value and I wanna isolate x. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by the sine of 13 degrees in order to isolate x. I have x isolated. There's no more simplification to do. I'm now ready to go ahead and use my table. I'm gonna use my sine column and I'm looking at 13. I pull that value right here and I have that x equals 18 over 0 0.2250. This is the same value we were looking at earlier in the um, lesson. When I use my calculator, let's see here, I get 18 divided by 0 0.225, I get that x equals 80. If you remember the triangle from earlier, we had a triangle with 13 degrees with measures of nine and 40. This is a dilation by two. 18 and 80 are the sides, and I also have just found it using the trigonometric ratios. This is 80 centimeters, by the way. I'm going to do one more example for you guys, and then you're going to do some practice for me. Here's another right triangle. I see that I have 24 degrees right there. The information that I see given to me is my opposite side, and my unknown that I want to figure out is my adjacent side. So which one uses opposite and adjacent? I go to SOHCAHTOA as always. Opposite and adjacent is right here. This is my tangent ratio. So let's write an equation. The tangent of 24 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. Same setup as before. Let's multiply to get rid of that fraction. Let's divide to isolate my unknown. Oops. Let's substitute using the table, eight over the tangent of 24, 0.4452. And I use my calculator to find that the unknown is approximately 17.97. Let's say that this is approximately and not exactly equal. It looks like this is meters. C is 17.97, but the length is 17.97 meters. Step-by-step -step practice problem for you before you head over to Delta Math. I want to walk you through this whole process. Here's a triangle with an unknown value. The first step is to use SOHCAHTOA to identify which ratio do you need. Which ratio do you need? Excellent. You should have identified cosine because you have the adjacent side and the given information is the hypotenuse and the adjacent is what you're after. Please take this moment to write an equation using cosine that we can go ahead and solve. Excellent. 
you should have written that the cosine of 52 degrees equals your unknown, the adjacent side, over the hypotenuse. You're now ready to try and solve this equation. Take a moment to try and solve it. Great. We have 5 times the cosine of 52 degrees is what isolates our variable for us. We're ready to substitute that value out, 52 and the cosine. I get 0.6157. And lastly, using my calculator, I get, sorry, patience, thank you. I get y equals 3.0785. And I'm done.